we're going to be taking a look at some movie details that you probably missed, but are very interesting. In the B movie 2007, absolute banger movie, by the way. It's not. It's it's quite bad. Like out of all DreamWorks animated movies, I'd probably put it further towards the end. Like you know, Shrek is obviously top tier. Shrek is unironically excellent. B movie, I'd, I'd put Shark Tale above it, honestly. After the bees win the court case and Honey becomes a controlled substance, the ATF becomes ATFH, which stands for Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Honey. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense because wasn't Honey banned because it was like it, it, it became a controlled substance so that the bees didn't die? It wasn't a dangerous substance for humans, so that doesn't really make much sense why they'd incorporate honey into alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. But anyway, I don't know how they got the rights to use um, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. I guess it's because they look at that that, that that doesn't look anything like Piglet. But I can't imagine Disney would have given them permission to use Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. In Turning Red 2022, these two girls have blue patches on their arms. They're actually insulin infusion sets for type 1 diabetes. Susan Fong, the technical supervisor for the movie, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as a child. That's a nice little bit of representation there. I don't think I've ever seen a diabetes representation in a movie. That's that's pretty cool. In Spider-Man Homecoming 2018, MJ is seen reading Invitation to a Beheading by Vladimir Nabokov. The book is about a man in a prison cell. The only other occupant is a spider. Because... <gasps> Spider-Man. In American Psycho 2000, my favourite movie ever, because I just relate so much to Patrick Bateman. The font used for Paul Allen's card is called Copper Plate Gothic, which was the same font used in the opening title sequence and the end credits of the movie. Cool. Don't care about that one. That one's a boring one. Fonts are boring. In Toy Story 1995, during the scene where Buzz Lightyear attempts to fly, you can see copyright Disney printed on his buttock. The thing is, Pixar are probably the best people at putting like Easter eggs in their films. I love them. Is there a subreddit dedicated to uh, like uh, Pixar theory or whatever it's called. Pixar movie details, yes. The memory of Riley from Inside Out appears to be Sunnyside from Toy Story 3. Inside Out is mid at best. I watched it relatively recently. Maybe kids enjoy it, but I, I, I don't know. I thought it was just quite boring. I thought it was over. I know I'm going to probably get shit on for that, but I just thought it was quite boring. That's, surely that's not... Actually, no, you know what? It's, it's not, that wouldn't be accidental. That's very intentional. That is definitely Sid. What? The carpet in Sid's house in Toy Story? The Overlook Hotel in the shut... You know, I, I would say these are coincidences, but I feel as though they're very, like, specific with the details in these movies. And that is actually a really, really good one because Sip was, was a pretty evil... Actually, no, he wasn't even evil. Like, think about it. Like, if your toys came to life, wouldn't you go a bit mental? Also, like, he didn't even know they were alive when he was, like, dismantling them and stuff. He was just a kid. Sip wasn't evil. You've all been gaslighted into thinking Sip from Toy Story is evil. He's not. He's just a kid. In Inside Out 2015, depending on the country of release, Riley's father daydreams about either hockey or football. That's interesting. Also, it is interesting how it's only in the USA where hockey is the sport he dreams about. In Cars 2006, this is, we're not even on the Pixar one at the moment. We're back on the movie details one. I might do a full video about Pixar movie details if you want to see that. But anyway, in Cars 2006, in Luigi's Casa della tires, Fettuccine tires are regular tires, whereas White Wall tires are known as Fettuccine Alfredo for the colour of the sauce. Cool. Oh, this is a cool one I saw on TikTok. I saw this from TikTok. Everything Everywhere All At Once 2022 banger film, by the way. One frame in the multi first montage includes the VFX crew editing the film on Zoom. So like there's this bit in the film where she's going through like so many lives and all that. And then there's just one. There's just one which uh, that's pretty cool. Also it's mad how small the production team on that film was. And they did a lot of it from home during like COVID. That's insane. It's insane. It's such a good film. In the movie Halloween 2018 three kids are shown wearing the same type of silver shamrock mask from the movie Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Well I've seen one Halloween film and it was alright. There's Isn't there like, like 10 of them like it's like marvel films there's just so many of them that i just i can't be i feel as though i have to watch them all because i don't know what i don't know what the word is I, I don't know if completionist is the word but if i'm gonna watch something i have to watch all of it and everything before it to do with it that's why i can never get into marvel films because so many of them are so bad that i just i can't watch it i can't also there's so many series that i just don't care about like there's one about what, 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 wandavision and i feel as though you needed to watch that to understand the new uh, doctor strange movie well i mean i understood what was going on in doctor strange movie i could kind of gather it that was mid, by the way, in the new Doctor Strange movie. But it's like, who, who the fuck is watching all these shows? Like, wouldn't you rather watch, like, something that's 
I don't know, good? <laughs> well, watching a t it's dedication to watch a TV show. It's multiple hours of your life. But I never watch a TV show unless I'm absolutely dead set it's going to be solid. The main characters of Ice Age represent the four major subgroups of placental mammals. That's a big word. Fuck me. I, I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that one, but sloths. Why have they put the scientific... No one's... I ain't reading all that shit. Sloths, mammoths. Well, that's not the main groups, but they're, they're, those are the scientific... I'm not reading that. Fuck that. And uh, I've never heard that word be used to describe humans before. You, I'm pretty sure Reddit user Lil Fentanyl 77 has just made it up. Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Robert England, the actor who plays Freddy Krueger, is the bus driver in the opening scene. Oh no, he's gonna kill them. In Shrek 2 2004, if you look far in the background in this shot, you can see a man climbing a ladder. He falls off just as the camera cuts away. Fucking hell. This is a two minute long clip. Oh, there he is. There he is. Uh, oh, and I found the... Idiot. In Despicable Me 2010, they're quite a good film, by the way. I, I did enjoy Despicable Me. I know a lot of people meme it. It's a big meme at the moment, but Despicable Me, I haven't seen the other ones. I've seen Minions, which actually, unironically, isn't that bad. It's pretty, it's all right. It's not, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit down and voluntarily watch it. I watched it for a joke, but I was like, you know what, this is, for a kid's film, this is all right. Despicable Me, however, good film, very good film. There is a portrait of the bank manager in the guise of Ingress's painting, Napoleon in his imperial throne. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna get a big painting of me there, like Napoleon. In the Dark Knight Rises, Catwoman wears the fingerprints of a criminal with the last name. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. The same surname Joker used when writing the mayor's obituary in the pre- He wrote the mayor's obituary in the previous film. I didn't- I don't take that much notice, I can't lie. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2 2022, the manual Agent Stone holds up is based off the original Sega Genesis manuals. Apparently, the, the Sonic the Hedgehog movies are actually quite good. I, I'm gonna look at the ratings for it. Because I've heard that they're actually not bad. I mean, the ratings aren't like, out of this world, but they don't look awful. Might be worth a watch. In Up 2009, the prescription medication behind Carl's alarm clock comes from Luxo Drugs, a reference to the early Pixar short Luxo Jr. What's that one? I've n I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Oh, it's to do with lamps. It's a, like, you know, the Pixar lamp. It's got the ball from Toy Story. In A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, the main character, Jesse, has a hat and a separate green and red sweater in his closet. A reference to the fact Freddy Krueger is possessing his body while he's sleeping. Very interesting. I've never seen them films before. I think I watched, like, like 15 minutes of the first Nightmare on Elm Street and I just fell asleep. In Notting Hill 1999, Alec Baldwin plays a fictional character, but a quick glance at an in-film newspaper indicates Alec Baldwin exists as himself too. Huh? Why does it say that? I don't think it specifically says Alec Baldwin. All I can see is it says Baldwin Brothers. Or does it? I I can't I can't see it anywhere. But maybe Alec Baldwin doesn't exist and the rest of the Baldwin brothers do. In Creep oh, Creep One is ugh. It's a good film. I I, did, I thought Creep One was a pretty good film. Like, not much happened for most of it, but then the ending was pretty mad. I haven't seen the second one. The killer remarks at the start about how he is going to record a beautiful 80-minute film for his first victim in the movie. Creep Two is a found footage horror movie, and its runtime is exactly 80 minutes. In Justice League 2017, Cyborg says "booyah." His catchphrase from the animated series Teen Titans. Actor Ray Fisher did not want to say the line, hence his annoyed expression. That was me years ago when people would just keep asking me to say Wagwan Pifting in videos. And that, was, that was me when I used to do cameo where people would tell me to say Wagwan Pifting watch your BBM pin. In the movie Starship Troopers there is a scene that shows the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars attached to one of the ships. Phil Tippett was part of the visual effects team on both movies. I always wonder how like, I, I mentioned this earlier with the B-movie thing, but I wonder how they get away with like these little um, cameos. Of, Cause surely the Millennium Falcon is like a, a trademarked thing. How did they get, even though it is like very, I, to be fair, there is a decent bit of plausible deniability with that. Like if I was just to look at that, I would not know it was the Millennium Falcon. It might not even be. In Land of the Dead 2005, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright make a cameo as photo booth zombies. George Romero was a big fan of Shaun of the Dead and asked them to be in his film. Banger film, banger film. Hot Fuzz better though. Not even a, not even a competition. Hot Fuzz is, is one of the best films ever made. In Spider-Man Homecoming, the Midtown School Science and Technology logo establishes that the school was founded in 1962, the exact same year Spider-Man himself and by extension the school's comic book counterpart was introduced. Cool, fun little detail. I feel as though a lot of movies do stuff like that though, so I'm, I'm not I'm not like, wow, that's so cool! I don't really care, that's one of the more lamer movie details I've seen today.